Hi, I am back with you. Today we are going to talk about composite button fabrication and how we can utilize these for the alignment of teeth with clear aligners. Uh, this is coming to you from Digital32 and I am Dr. Gurkirat Singh giving you this small clinical pearl which you can use in your practice when you are using K-Line clear aligners. The most difficult movements that you have been told which are very difficult to achieve with aligners is extrusion and intrusion of teeth. There is no control unless you have an attachment on these teeth and this can be simplified if the orthodontist is ready to use some kind of buttons or maybe temporary anchorage devices and use elastics according to that. The first thing that you have to do when you are going to intrude or extrude any teeth is that you need to communicate your intention to the lab. It is very important that K-Line knows what you are planning and can accordingly create space within the aligner for this movement to take place. So the first step involves etching of the tooth. So you clean the area where you want to make or fabricate a button. Once you have etched that area, you apply a coat of primer. On top of it, you put a small module, the same module that you use around brackets. So it's very simple. Once you've done this, just light cure the primer with the module for 10 seconds. Once you have light cured, all you need to do is put some flowable composite, filling or rather overfilling this module so that it bulges out, as you can see on the figure on the right side. We light, cure. we light cure the same again for 20 seconds as per the instructions of the cure, uh, the flowable composite that you use. And the figure on the right shows how it will look post curing the flowable composite embedded in an orthodontic module that you use around brackets. What you need to do is all you need to do is use a 12, uh, 11 number BP blade, a sharp blade to cut the module and you will have a very nice looking, very rounded composite button. You don't need to do any um, removal of excess composite because it is bonded onto the tooth and you have a perfectly formed button available to you. This concept has been taken from an article that was published years back in the Journal of Clinical Orthodontics, which is, I consider, one of the best journals for clinicians. These are simple mechanics and you can make out that we have a case wherein uh, you have to extrude the maxillary canine and we are utilizing two buttons on the premolar and giving a, a kind of a v-shaped elastic to bring the canine into place. The two things that are important is that there should be a gap for the extrusion of the canine and the same should be communicated where the button is going to be located so that space can be left for the fabrication of the button and the aligner should not impinge either on the button or on the extruding tooth. Another something that has not been utilized to its true potential is TADS along with the liners. These temperature anchorage devices aid in intrusion and extrusion as well as retraction in conventional orthodontics as well as with aligners. Now we have a case, I'm going to show you a case. It generates more interest that way. We have a canine, the left maxillary canine, which is in infraclusion, that means it is high placed, and the maxillary uh, mandibular uh, canine on the left side, on the same side, which is supra erupted into this space that ideally needs to be occupied, uh, you know, for good occlusion with the teeth with the upper canine. So now we have two difficult movements that we need to perform extrusion of the 2 3 and intrusion of the 3 3. So, what mechanics did I actually choose? when I was deciding to treat this case with the liner. 
So we place the temporary anchorage device uh, mesial to the 33 and we have made a button on the 33 that is the mandibular left canine and the gingival one third there is a small window that is preventing the canine from the aligner from impinging onto the button and the patient wears 24 hours a small elastic usually a gray elastic in this case in transparent form exerting a small amount of force for the intrusion of the mandibular left canine once this movement has been achieved and there is enough space to extrude the maxillary left canine we will form another button let me just show you let me just show you a close up of this and you can make out that there is a small button and you can have a button which is of the right shade matching that of the clinical tooth and invariably it is hardly visible when the patient removes these aligners there is no problem as the elastic and the tad will remain in place so once this has intruded enough we are planning to extrude the maxillary left canine this is a photograph with the maxillary left canine having an another button made on the gingival one-third of the clinical crown and again since the patient is a working person and does not want the elastic to be visible the patient wears during the day an elastic which is from the temporary anchorage device to the mandibular canine and during night time he wears the same elastic from the maxillary canine so what are we achieving daytime the force is acting to intrude the mandibular canine and in the night it is extruding the maxillary canine a close-up view of the two buttons you can make out they are very very well colored and contoured so that they are not impinging plus the aligner has been such fabricated that that has a air gap for the extrusion of the maxillary canine and it the aligner does not impinge onto the button that has been fabricated by the orthodontist this is a two month comparison in the amount of extrusion that has been achieved and the amount of intrusion of the mandible canine that has been achieved using clear k line clear aligners so you can make out that a phenomenal amount of space has been closed in the lower arch as well as we have got the intrusion of the mandibular canine which is a very difficult movement to achieve by itself using just aligners as well as the extrusion of the maxillary canine and these are very simple mechanics it's nothing complicated but there is a good amount of planning that has been undertaken good communication by the orthodontist with the lab to achieve this movement some other things that you can do is having these buttons on the incisors in deep white cases and tads between the teeth and clear elastics running right through in deep bite cases to get true intrusion of the teeth this is very simple mechanics and the partial coverage that the aligner provides onto the incisors prevents any kind of flaring uh, which would usually take place when we use the same mechanics in a buckly placed uh, buckly placed uh, normal so this is the case that is under treatment and within six months or maybe even less we have achieved a good amount of true intrusion of the maxillary incisors thereby taking care of the deep bite or the traumatic bite that they were resulting in and the true intrusion can be very easily compared when you compare the height of the uh, the vertical aspect of the incisal edge of the incisors vis-a-vis -vis the tip of the maxillary canine which is very clearly visible in the follow-up photographs good mechanics simple mechanics predictable mechanics that is what we want to have whatever the appliance that we might be using 
irrespective of the appliance that we use. We want predictability more than anything and that is what we are trying to achieve even with K-Line clear aligners. So my recommendation is very simple. Please think before you start. Always have a good communication with the lab and lead the treatment as an orthodontist. Don't forget your basic mechanics and use K-Line clear aligners for your patients. Thank you very much. I hope Digital 32, Dental Solutions Private Limited and K-Line Germany have been up to the mark in terms of providing you not just the good aligner quality but good communication for you to provide ideal treatment to your patients. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Gurkirat Singh signing off. Thank you.